right, everybody, Hello. welcome Jess. Jess, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing good. We're surviving. I mean, yeah. uh, it's so funny. Jess and I have always uh, talked about doing some collaborative stuff. This is kind of our, well, no, we did the Instagram live the other day, but I, I'm, we had to like delay like a couple stuff for your YouTube channel. And I wanted to talk with you about kind of your plans for that now that you're in quarantine. Oh, well, like, what am I doing to occupy myself and not go yeah. crazy? Um, you know, I mean, I'm kind of just focusing on the YouTube channel that I recently started. And thank God I started it right before Seriously. the outbreak. Yeah. Because at least by that point, by the time all this hit, okay, sorry. First of all, I'm using Blair's ear earbuds, and they keep popping out of my head. So <laughs> I'm just going to hold my ears like this. But, um... But uh, yeah, because at least at, at least by that point, like when we all had to be put yeah. on lockdown, I had done enough of them to kind of have the gist of rolling it out on my own with my mm -hmm. uh, with my friend Rob, who I work with. And so um, that was that was good. So I've just been kind of focusing on that and then doing live streams, uh, both for content, but also honestly, for a lot of fun. I think this is a good opportunity to um touch base with a lot of people that I forget to touch base with as often as I probably should, just because mm -hmm. the nature of life, you know, you, you, you think, Oh, well, I'll text that person in like five minutes. And then all of a sudden you get pulled in a different direction. You're like, Oh, well, I'll text them later this afternoon. And they get pulled in a different direction. And then, you know, two years go by and you never sent the text. So this kind of like yeah. forced sit down, figure out what you need to do with yourself moment that we're all having is actually been oddly helpful for me to kind of reach out to folks that I've lost connection with, but you know, still mentally think about all the time and be like, Oh, Hey, what's going on? Da, 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 da. Let's do a, let's do a stream. Let's touch base. Let's see what's going You know, it doesn't even, it's just, it's kind of worked out in a weird way. The only problem to all uh, of I it is that my upload speed is absolute garbage because everybody <laughs> being at home. And so my streaming is just trash. So that's, that's the downside. Oh, that's okay. We can hear you super well. And, oh, okay. and I totally agree with you on what you're talking about, where this is like, there's a bit of a pause on in some aspects of our lives that now we can take that extra time to, like you said, get more creative or connect with people we haven't spoken to in a long time. And um, it's just, it's been really nice. And like just being able to, um, you know, have the time to, like you said, like map out what to do with yourself like what are you going to do during this quarantine are you going to yeah. read books are you going to make content and it seems like you've been rolling really uh on the content side of things which is really exciting how did your youtube channel idea get started like what made you want to kick it off this year um just because i was bored <laughs> i mean uh, <laughs> you know, i've been passing right. around the idea of doing it for a while now and then after i left nerdist um, I went immediately into taping Expedition X, which kept me on the road yes. pretty much nonstop for like three to four months. And so once that oh, man. ended, um, I just needed, I needed something to do, but I needed something to do on my own timeline because when we were doing right. Expedition X, it was like, I mean, it was an awesome experience, but it was really, it was like a really heavy duty work, uh, work, uh, what's the schedule? And so, Schedule, yeah, yeah. so once I got done with that, um, I was a little bit exhausted. <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah. and I still wanted to do stuff because even though, you know, physically I'm tired, mentally I'm like, oh, I have this problem where if I sit, especially coming off of a job, and this would happen mm -hmm. to me even at conventions, like ever, when there's ever a big moment of a lot of movement, like if it's a convention that you're covering or if it's like doing Expedition X or some other big like out of your um, usual nine to five wheelhouse. I have this thing mm -hmm. and uh, my friend Ashley and I have discussed this too. We have this thing where it's like you kind of crash, but, and you have like a little bit of like after, like it's like after effect depression where it's like your body yeah. feels like it has to do something even though you're tired. And so, but yeah. And then you stop, you tell yourself, man, just slow down for a second and enjoy a break. But then the other part of you is like, yeah, but if we don't keep the momentum going, then it's all going to fall apart. And, da, 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 da. and so I am a big victim of that, of my own demise in regards to that. And so I was having that happen to me. And I was like, well, I guess let's meet it halfway. And just... <laughs> friends and chat. Right. We'll meet it halfway. And then I'll, um, I'll do the YouTube video, but at least I can kind of, 
figure out what I want the pace to be, what I want the subject matter to be, and all of that stuff. And so mm-hmm. that gave me a little bit more um, maneuverability. And so, so yeah. that's kind of why I started that. Oh, man. I, well, I, I definitely relate to what you're talking about when you go out to these events and it's just like, go, 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 go. And then you come back and you're on you're on this kind of like high and then your body naturally has to like take a huge dip in terms of like energy and recuperating. And, yeah. and then you're kind of left with like the mind that wants to keep going, but in your body you're, and physica- like your physical body and, you know, mentally you need a, a real break. Um, so it's cool that you found like a solution and still you know, address that, I guess, and, and do like some content and like create some stuff and still put some stuff out there. That's really cool. And I think totally like as freelancers too, I mean, freelancer now, but it even applies to when I was working for a variety of different companies. I mean, there is a natural ebb and flow to the yearly work that's allotted to you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think as a freelancer, there's a, there's even more of that feeling to hit the panic button because if you can't keep up, there's so many other people waiting in the wings, opportunities that might pass you by, and your brain just does this evil thing, or at least mine does, this evil thing of like telling me, well, that was the last job, that was the last job, that was the last job. I know, the and, fear. Yeah, yeah, the fear. And even when I worked for other companies and I had like contracts, it still was that way. And so it just, yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's taken me what I'm like, yeah, doing this for 14 (laughs) years and I'm, I'm just now sort of getting okay with it, you know? So, right. It is what it is. Well, you're doing it super. Yeah, no, I mean, you're doing it the right way and that you're like pacing yourself out and you're only doing what you want to be doing when you want to be doing. Um, and it looks like you really take, uh, like the way you've out rolled out your content too has been really really cool and super well shot and like really good highly produced you know like really good looking um was that like something that you were just you wanted to hit right off the bat or like what kind of what was your uh, process through creating the the tone and kind of how your your whole youtube channel uh works and and looks yeah like the vibe of your channel no it's kind of like fly by the seat of your pants <laughs> i mean i did have, yeah i did have some idea of what i wanted to do i wanted it to be very right. kind of vloggy style i wanted it to be i wanted it to look nice and highly produced but not so much that it became mm-hmm. um it became unapproachable you know I wanted it to be, um, I wanted people watching to still kind of feel connected to what we were doing and who I was as, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, host of my channel and or the person that Mm -hmm. you're hanging out with. And honestly, the reason I wanted the production value to be up there was less because of me and, you know, trying to set up shots that looked nice and this, that and the other thing. But I, the whole goal was to take people to places that I thought were really cool and you don't want to take someone yeah. to a place that you think super awesome and then and, and have it look like crap. Like you want to take them somewhere. And not do it justice. Yeah, yeah. you want to make the place look good. And so I thought that yeah. that was also like high up there. Of course, all of that has now gotten, am I allowed to swear on your show? <laughs> um, We have a swear jar. So I, I would say, pivot. I'm all, <laughs> glad I asked. Glad I asked. Um, that has all yeah. gotten shot to whatnot because now right since we're all home i can't really travel even Mm -hmm. even that that much locally in la i mean i've been toying with the idea of maybe just to get out of the house get in my car and drive around for an hour and not get out of the car yeah but at least yeah i've been doing that too it's useful yeah but you know but i can't go and like do a thing so no on the flip side of that now we've been kind of um testing the waters for doing very kind of uh i call it hipster glam blog style I like it yeah so you know like like hey here's me making this really awesome cup of coffee um here's me (laughs) wandering through the house and sitting in the backyard listening to the birds and then um but always kind of tossing a little bit of humor in too because I find that those types of blogs while lovely and I'm obsessed with them have a tendency to be Mm -hmm. like magazines and so you know, in reality yeah. right now, it's like, okay, so here's me walking out to the birds and on my way to sit down outside and, t- and like have my coffee and listen to the birds, you know, uh, my kids like mom, 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 you know, like it's just real <laughs> yeah. life. I'm trying to fix some real life in there too. So 
I'm, I'm nice. fumbling around with, with what my options are currently in the situation that we're in. Uh, well, you're doing a good job at it. Uh, so people could find your channel. No, it's true. I've, I've been a fan of your channel since you launched it. I'm like, I'm like on board for more Chobot, uh, vlogs and everything. Um, so your channel is just Jessica Chobot at youtube.com yeah. slash Jessica Chobot. Yeah. If you just search Jessica Chobot, cool. it should, or even maybe Chobot, although that, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, I think that will bring, I bet, I bet both work. I think both you will eventually find me. Should work. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, well, I wanted to talk about your uh, show Expedition X, which is still airing, if I'm understanding correctly. So, I, yes. Like you... uh, we air every Wednesday, and then I believe later on in the week there's reruns. Um, we, because, of, I, because of the situation we were all in, I think we have one more episode to go, but I'm not sure when that's going to get released because, okay. um, you know, we were still doing voiceover and stuff. Mm -hmm. up until everybody was sent home and so mm -hmm. I think just to be on the safe side and to make sure people don't get sick by having to be forced to you know work in close quarters yeah uh, everything's kind of been, um been pushed um but uh but we had I believe ooh, don't quote me on this but I think six or eight episodes I think eight I think eight so yeah if you can eight. still awesome yeah the long way around this answer is that Yes, you can still find it. It's still out there. Um, I think we have one more to go. and um, But in the meantime, you can catch all the reruns. Yeah, and they're also available online, I think. Someone I believe me. so. I believe you need to have to be signed up to Discovery's um, streaming service. And then you Channel. Be able to find yeah, it. yeah, they're yeah. streaming. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. What was that? Ex like, uh, I guess we could touch on, like, what that experience is like. Because, I mean... Well, luckily, it happened all before everything, right? Oh, so you're yeah. able to travel everywhere. Um, did anything that happened during your, your uh, experience surprise you? Or, like, uh, was it challenging at any point? Like, what was your experience like working on that? Because it's just crazy. You got to travel everywhere. I was seeing on your Instagram and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, it was killing me that I couldn't tell people what I was up to uh, right I know. away. <laughs> yeah. So that was the struggle. That was a real struggle. Um, yeah. But then the other part of it was, um, I think I just said the other part of it. The other part of it. <laughs> that works. We're all about farts on this show. <laughs> um, the other part of it was that, um, I mean, it was it was physically demanding. I mean, you're talking to mm -hmm. somebody here, and I'm totally fine to say this, that has not really done any physical anything for most of my life. I think the last mm -hmm. kind of like exercise I've ever had was when I was playing softball back in uh, high school. So, oh my gosh, softball, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was that's been the extent of my my activity. And so to take me and drop me in the middle of like the Cambodian rainforest was yeah. a steep learning curve on a physical level like I struggled in fact if you watch the Cambodian episode you can see a scene where my I kind of go dead inside because I was <laughs> so it was so hot and it was so muggy and I was struggling so hard to keep it together and I was just starting to I was just not acclimating well um and yeah. I was just starting to like sweat my soul out of my out through my pores but um, but, I <laughs> but in hindsight now, and even shortly thereafter, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like I find myself thinking back to Cam, actually specifically Cambodia all the time. I absolutely loved it there. Um, mm -hmm. I miss the crew and my co-hosts and the people we hung out with because we became fast friends in a very short amount of time because it was hardcore for everybody. Like just, as as hard as it was for me to be in some of these extreme locations, it was doubly mm -hmm. hard for a person that has to sit there carrying a camera rig and a camera you know yeah. the entire time and standing out in the middle of the sun during monsoon season. can't imagine yeah and it, it's tough for everybody so you're just kind of forced to make it work which is great because now i i would i would have i would reach out to any of those people and be like hey how's it going da, 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 da. like i would consider them all friends easily yeah so i had a wonderful time oh, awesome. and then in regards mm -hmm. to like did editing happen happen in in you know, like the ghosty creepy stuff yes yes so <gasps> i need to know the first episode that we aired which was the islands of the island of the dolls episode out in mexico city 
so much weird weird crazy stuff happened there that even even my co-host and I already were like uh we're like this is a little yeah. much like I- I'm kind of uncomfortable like we definitely like there's a moment where so I guess I, let me back up so to make the story make more sense when we first shot that <clears throat> that was the first time I'd ever worked with any of these people and I'm not a big fan of uh crying on camera either or crying in general in real life I don't like it it's hard it's It's not it sucks it's not an emotion I enjoy so I try to never do it the minute we stepped on this island in the shack where the original doll was found by the the by the owner of the island and hung up I felt this like wave of sadness kind of like directionally hit me from like left to right almost like I don't know it was weird Naomi and then I immediately started sobbing like uncontrollably sobbing and this wasn't like four episodes in when we're all exhausted so you could probably say oh maybe she's just too tired right and it's not like this is the first time this is my first rodeo on camera so it's not like I'm too nervous and I can't handle myself um and, wow. and on top of it, I'm with all these strangers for the first time. The one thing I absolutely don't want to do is look like an idiot and start sobbing right. for no reason in, in front of an entire right. crew. I want to look like it's hey, a vulnerable you, thing. Yeah, yeah, you hired the right person, and here I am, like, <laughs> you know, like, no, that's not the impression <laughs> I want to give. And so, um, so that was a hundred percent real. Like that situation wow. really happened, and and I thought to myself after I left the shack and tried to pull myself back together well at least we got out on camera at least it'll make good tv and right, right like not three minutes later the camera guy comes over and he's like i don't know what happened but this entire camera just bricked like the whole thing bricked what and those cameras oh are God. those cameras are made to go outside and handle harsh conditions and and be running all the time and, you know, we had a, a, like the whole crew, there, there was tech support. There was tech sp- support exclusively for those yeah. cameras. And the one that was on me that one time is the one that completely break, like broke right when I started crying. Whoa. So that was creepy. And then we had another time when I was sitting there calling to like the spirits or whoever was in the, the room and right. And we couldn't we couldn't roll yet because they couldn't get the led lights to work because we need we mm-hmm. needed a little bit of light for the cameras to pick up things that Definitely, were going on yeah. in the room and we were all on walkie talkies i knew where everyone was i actually had a crew in the room with me trying to fix the problem and i remember hearing on the walkie like what's the hang up and i got on my walkie and i said oh the led light won't turn on but as soon as we get it on it we were good to go and the minute i said it won't turn on the thing went full blast on its own and wow. everybody in the room just stopped and stared at it like oh my gosh and oh then, my god yeah, i mean just like little little things like that happened constantly in every episode oh my gosh something weird happened that i can't explain i'm sure phil my co-host as a scientist would have some logical reason but um but yeah, I couldn't figure it out. Oh my god! I mean, I would come back from a trip like that, and I'd I'd have trouble sleeping. I feel like I would. That's crazy. Yeah, that the, is an insane story. The only <laughs> time we got back from a trip where I got a little nervous, and it was after the Brazil episode, the Brazilian rainforest, where I had to do. This is gonna sound so weird on camera. Where I had to do <laughs> it's the, okay. the blood, my my self blood sacrifice into the fire. So basically, okay. we met with a sh- yeah. You're like yeah, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'd met with a shaman, and he suggested that for us to uh, be able to touch base with this spirit in this abandoned location that people believed was there, mm-hmm. to make a sacrifice. And so I offered cutting my finger open and, and dripping it in, into this fire that I was told to make. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Which on a personal level is what are you doing and then also on the you know fan of the weird and crazy uh stuff that i like to do on the other side of my brain it was like yes bucket list (laughs) item of of what you're trying to pull off right now 
so right. um, I did that and I was like, well, that was a little hardcore. Like, uh, I'm a little nervous. Like, I hope nothing, you know, follows me back. Follows you after this. Yeah. And so then I went almost like two days after I landed back home, I ended up uh, going to Paris and I brought a girlfriend with me and, um, and I was having a hard time sleeping. So I woke up at like two in the morning. I was going to text her to just see if she was awake. Cause we were, you know, time change. And I looked mm-hmm. at my phone and something had texted me, catchy, catchy up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up. And what? I started, I mean, I kind of, I kind of shortened the story a little bit, even though now we're dragging on. But, um, so basically I texted her and I put the phone down and I went to go do my hair. Cause I'm like, I'm up. It's two. I might as well just stay up. I'm not going back to sleep. And I heard the phone, uh, notification that I got a text back go off and so I was like oh great she's up so I walk back to the phone to look to see what she sent me but she didn't send me anything instead in my as if I was typing it you know like at the bottom of your phone as if you're typing to somebody yeah yeah in my in my little type section where I'm supposed to be sending somebody a message it said catchy catchy up catch up catch up so she never sent me anything but the phone activated and that was the thing that flipped out and I was like oh my gosh I would creep that would creep me out yeah back. so I sat down in the room and just spoke out into the ether like hey if something followed me back I'm gonna give you two options you can either join me and we will it will be awesome for both of us or you might be right. this and make me miserable in which case I will ruin both of our lives if it means getting back at you and then I was like so make your choice and then nothing happened but then you know, to kind of kill the story. I looked up online <laughs> right. later and uh, it's just a glitch in the iPhone. <laughs> oh, okay. But man, that gave me shivers. Oh, no, oh my God. Sweating. It took me a month to figure out the glitch. And I was like, ah, oh, dang. Cause I was kind of excited too. Like, oh yeah. Now I got my yeah. own little, like, uh, like my own little spirit. Supernatural moment. So yeah. yeah. Whoa. That's crazy, man. Mm. I, I, uh, you're very brave to like <laughs> pursue Thanks. these supernatural out of the world things Bring yeah i wouldn't be able to do tr- it take your pick but it was super right. fun yeah oh man i can only imagine well i definitely think people should tune in to that show uh give it a watch guys plus it's more chobot um i wanted to talk to you a bit about like how gaming has evolved in your life mm-hmm. uh i know it's kind of a deep question but like have you has, have your habits changed? Are there a different games that you're into now than maybe you wouldn't have been before? Uh, just what's your play style? What's your kind of go-to these days? Yeah, um, I mean, things have definitely changed. I don't feel, and this was a dis- conscious decision I made years and years ago, is I stopped, I stopped pursuing everything for the sake of sounding like I knew it all. Like I was, right. I keep my, you know, for work, I obviously try to pay a bit of attention but that feeling mm-hmm. of I need to play this or else I'm not a real gamer or I'm not a real, uh, I'm not really truly. True. Like, I, I've got, I'm not on top of the trend. Yeah, yeah. I kind of stopped that because it was kind of that, that weird um, feeling of having to pursue that stuff uh, kind of killed the fun for me. And I could tell that I was mm-hmm. losing interest and I didn't want to lose interest yeah. in gaming because I love gaming. And so and yeah, I and so to take the pressure off of myself and the prof of that feeling, I um I started focusing on the games that I just really wanted to play. And then if there's something that came up that I should know about specifically for an event or an interview or whatever, then I would do a deep dive. But I wouldn't. It wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't. It wouldn't encompass my entire existence trying to keep that stuff right. afloat. So right. Good. That's actually been really, that was actually super, super helpful. And I'm glad I, I figured that out when I did. Um, gameplay wise, as far as things have changed, I pretty much have stuck to the same games that I've always enjoyed. A lot of um, action adventure, act- uh, a lot of puzzle games. Um, mm-hmm. I'm really into, I call them yoga games. And those are the like Stardew Valleys or the Animal Crossing. Oh, things yeah. where you can kind of just sit and listen to chill music. Chill. Yeah. I love yeah. the chill games. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm because of my child who is now in an age where he can handle playing games on his own. I find myself Mm -hmm. focusing and evaluating child appropriate games a lot more in a way that Mm -hmm. when I was, uh, didn't have a kid, 
um, blew off. And so a lot of my um, video game kind of approach now is, can I play this with my kid? Or, um, yeah. you know, or how can I utilize gaming lifestyle in a healthy way for my child uh, on his own, but also as a family? So, you know, yeah. that kind yeah. of stuff, which I would have ignored in the past or kind of been snarky about, um, I've definitely changed my tune on <laughs> for sure. Right. And um, and am interested in even kind of um, doing what I can to uh, bring that to bring more attention to that as well. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you have any advice or people, I guess, can just follow you, right? If they want recommendations for like, if parents are looking for like what to play, are you looking to do any like content around that? Or do you have any like advice for people? Yeah. I mean, for, yeah, you can always hit me up. I'm always happy to give my recommendations. Yeah. I mean, always I, tweet at Jess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hit me up. I mean, as everybody's parenting style is different, everybody's um, what they think their child should be should do or not do is different so you know take my advice with a grain of salt and apply what works for you right. to what you're doing but I'm happy to give suggestions um, I'm definitely wanting to do more in that space I think that as gamers get older and have kids of their own and it, it not only does that apply to me currently but that will eventually whether they believe it or not apply to mm -hmm. the next generation that's coming up <laughs> and getting older yeah that um, yeah that you know, that's a growing industry that doesn't uh, get a lot of attention or the attention that it should. You know, I think a lot of people mm -hmm. still kind of assume gaming is a teenager's or young adult's pastime. Um, yeah, and, but it's changed a lot, I feel like. And it has changed a lot, but, but, but yeah, I think it could but even I agree. more. Like, I think it could really, there's, there's um, aspects, there's all these different aspects to gaming that really could... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and deserve, you know, a spot, a spot at the table. And, yeah, um, totally. and I think being, uh, being an adult and being a parent and, and having to balance that I'm still a gamer myself, but now I have all these other responsibilities. How can I keep my own individuality as a gamer while also including my family and so that we can find some yeah. kind of harmonious middle ground. That's kind of the thing. Cause yeah. I don't think it's fair to ask, um, adults like, oh, now you suddenly can't play all these first person shooters because you've got a kid in the house. Well, that's ridiculous. Of course, if you like that stuff, you should absolutely be playing it. Should, yeah, totally. But also maybe, you know, like, but, but also try to find things that you can play as a family. And the problem with that there is I don't think the people are not interested in finding those other avenues. It's just that nobody's really marketing to them. And it, so it makes it difficult right. to find those titles. So yeah. Yeah. La, 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 la. That's what I'm kind of <laughs> no, it's great. I think you should definitely, like you said, do more in that space. Yeah. And I think there's a need for that. Yeah, totally. um, I want to see any final questions from the audience. Was chat active? Did anyone ask questions? I know I have one here actually quickly that I can ask you from uh, someone who asked me online. What's your favorite emote? My favorite emote in what? In Animal Crossing? Yeah, to, or like uh, emoji, I should say. Oh, emoji? Emoji? Or emoji, yeah. Emoji. No, I meant like not Twitch emote, right? Not Twitch emote, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Emoji, I mean Angstons probably. Oh god. <laughs> I wanna I wanted to come on here and be so mature. Uh it's probably <laughs> the poop emoji. <laughs> I love it. All right, that's perfect. Yeah. Or or <laughs> on the record. I'm also really big into like double hand. You know, I'm always like, yeah, double, double hand. Double yeah. Hand. So, um, Praise. yeah, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. always, in, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm down for double hands okay. and also, uh, the poop emoji. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't have much time left. Is there a question uh, in chat that we, we could ask? Okay. Yeah. Well, in any case, uh, I, I think you're awesome, Jess. I think, oh, thank, uh, yeah. you know, we're going to probably do some collabs once we're out of our homes. Yeah. Uh, you know, and any time, oh, we could ho hopefully uh, do a couple more Instagram uh, lives. I think that that was really fun. I had a great time uh, talking about Tiger. Oh my God, Tiger yeah. King. I listen, I know Tiger King. Talk, like, some people oh are like God. the hype train, yada, yada, Tiger yada. King. I'm not interested. Listen, I also am a person that doesn't dig jumping on hype trains along with everybody else, but this is when you can't miss, folks. This is you fun. cannot. Don't miss this. <laughs> <laughs> I so agree with that. Um, yeah, so let's let's hop on another Instagram uh, live at some point. And again, thank you so much for for being on this show. I know we were supposed to have you in person, but uh, this was just as cool. And uh, we'll totally uh, do some YouTube stuff down the line. I'm sure I'll keep watching. Everybody, tune into uh, Jess's stuff, of course, on her channels. She's Jessica Trobot pretty much across the board. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Jess. Oh, thanks for having me. I'll be. I have a good rest of your week. Anytime.
Yes, I love it. We'll definitely have to have you back on. All right. Uh, have a good night, Jess. And uh, guys, thank you so much for watching our episode today. Um, we, of course, I mean, I could have talked with Jess forever. There was so, she had such great stories uh, about that experience. I, I definitely might have some nightmares tonight because of that. Um, spooky. Uh, but I think you guys should definitely check her out. She's, uh, as you know, she's in the gaming space. She's an icon. I she's tweet, a big deal. I, she's a big deal. Um, and you guys should definitely check out either her show or her YouTube channel or both. Um, that's all I got for you guys today. What a great show. Got some gaming news, some good uh, hangout chats. Um, we'll have to see who we have on next week. Of course, I'll be teasing that on my channels. Stay tuned for that. Always open to suggestions, so be sure to tweet at me if you have any. Uh, this has been another episode of Last Week in Gaming, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Uh, Pikachu bought out. <laughs> <laughs>